It is December 1st, and for me, that marks the beginning of the festive season. I always love that time, especially around the Christmas holidays, when I finally get some time to relax, calm down, and start a bunch of new projects that I'm never going to finish. One of those projects that I started a couple of Christmases ago is inside this box right in front of me. It's the perfect combination of the three things I love the most. Christmas, Lego, and trains. So today we are going to work on the world's most over-engineered LEGO train set that is used to deliver drinks. Okay, so what's the mission here? Well, this is my childhood LEGO train set. I dug it up two years ago and thought, well, this would look good moving around the family Christmas tree. So I simply put it up, added a timer on the power supply and watched it go around around the tree. Well, that would have been the reasonable and feasible solution for that problem. But of course, I completely over-engineered it. I threw a microcontroller in there, built a custom motor control loop, also built some kind of uh, brick-based location service so I could stop it at certain locations, and I also added Wi-Fi to be able to control it from my phone, uh, as well as a totally custom and very sketchy power bank power supply solution. Well, let's just say I might have overcomplicated things a little bit. But this year it's going to be different. This year I actually found a very feasible use case for this train. I'm going to turn it into a shot delivery machine for my next Christmas party. By the way, the party is in one week. And I also want to make a video to finally put up another video after three years of time. Which is definitely not going to add any complications whatsoever. Let's get back on track with our train. First I thought about picking off where I left off last year, with all the features and adding a bunch more, for example a distance sensor to stop if something gets in the way, a sound module to play funny sounds when the train stops and starts, uh, also more LED lights and a bunch of other features. But then again I thought, it's one week of time, what am I going to do realistically? So the main goals here are Make it move and make it not spill drinks everywhere, which usually means slowing down and stopping automatically. A couple of optional features are lights, as always we need LED lights, uh, and literally all the other features that I'm realistically never going to add. Let's start with making this train move. Luckily for us, these old LEGO trains use a very simple method of propulsion, which is called a DC motor. What I've got here is a simple power supply. I'm just using the microcontroller to split the power. So this is five volts going straight to these two clamps. And if you connect them to these old rails, the motor moves and the train moves with it. What's nice about these Lego motors is that they also offer a little port where you can connect the Lego cable to extract power. With this I can just connect the motor from the top and supplied with power this way. But of course I don't want to do that by hand the whole time. I mean, what do I have a microcontroller for? But while this microcontroller is in fact very very smart, it is also very very weak and wouldn't stand a chance in a fight against such power electronics as these motors. This is why we need to put something in between the control electronics and the power electronics side of things. A motor driver. Luckily I've got a bunch of projects that I can just choose from to cannibalize. For example, I can rip the motor controller out of this one and throw it to the side to never finish it. So we've got one for this project. Thanks to the power of editing we do now have this thing. But what is this thing you may ask? Well, it's our beautiful microcontroller combined with the motor controller. All strapped to a power bank with a nice little rubber band holding it all together and connected to the motor with the cable. Thanks to my programming skills and me just straight up stealing code from other projects, I can connect to this whole setup wirelessly through my phone using Bluetooth and use this sketchy little app to push buttons and actually make it move. It even works when it's fallen off the table, isn't that crazy? Unfortunately, the additional cards that are ordered are stuck in transit and won't arrive on time. So we're going to have to build our own stuff. Luckily I found these models on Thingiverse that should hopefully help me replace the original axles as well as this nice little magnetic coupler and build my own train cart. Here's the result. It doesn't work that well and it certainly doesn't look that good. But with this box it does at least fit all of the electronics. 
While we are on the topic of electronics, time for some soldering. And it's done. Time to hide all of the electronics nice and clean inside things like the locomotive. Okay, wiring is done. As you can see, all the electronics fit nicely in the little box cart right here. Let's put it on the big track. Okay, our train is now on track. Let's first try to connect to it. That worked, we are going, we're getting messages and let's give it full throttle. Okay, it's actually starting, but apparently I still have software box in there. Yeah, that might be an issue. All right, after some track relaying and some moving the axles closer together, it now barely works and makes it around the corners, even with a glass of water on top. I just said barely. But barely is just good enough for the party. And considering my time limit, this is all I've got. So here's some footage of the train actually delivering drinks on the party. Just two days after the party, all of those showed up. It's 80 straight pieces of track as well as 20 additional curves and one of those crisscross thingies. Finally enough material to build the train track of my dreams. Let's get started. forgot to cover is how the automatic stopping works. Let's do that real quick. We have two very cheap and very simple components. One is a touch module. As the name suggests, it detects touch. But it is also sensitive to other things, such as the second component, a Lego brick covered in aluminum foil. My little box cart also has one of those sensors underneath it. So whenever it moves over the marker brick, it triggers. The software detects the brake and brings this train to a halt within a second. Just six days after the party, one of the remaining train cards showed up. Let's put it in place. It still looks super ugly, so while we're at it, why don't we just give it a complete overhaul? Well, that little sentence that you just heard is what experts would call an underestimation. Anyways, I threw out the box cart and moved all the electronics to this long boy. For this, I had to shrink them, which looked like this. Although I did not have to do that, I did also fry my microcontroller board and had to remove it. I then went for a smaller version that I could not get to work because of software issues, which led me back to my original design. And as a little side mission, I almost ignited my battery while I was at it. Anyways, two weeks down the drain and we've got this. I call it the spine. It also has LED lights on top. All of this fits nicely inside our little train cart with a brain in the front, power in the back, and party on top. This little adventure brings us back to our train, which now looks like this. Time to take it for a spin. <laughs>
Cheers.